All right. Mm. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I am just going to allow a few people an opportunity to get on to this scope tonight. It is about to be real. And so guess what? I don't always say this when I get on Periscope, but I'm going to say to you today, invite your followers on Facebook, Twitter, on Periscope, because we're going to talk about some real stuff on tonight. Amen. And so while you all are actually inviting your followers, uh, I just want to say, uh, first of all, I'm Tanya Mitchell, uh, the pastor of Nothing But The Truth Ministries in Clinton, Maryland. <clears throat> And uh, I'm going to be dealing with an issue that uh, needs to really be addressed in the body of Christ today with my sisters. Amen. Uh, uh, some things that take place in our lives is a direct result of us. And so let me start by reading you just one small scripture. And it's found in Proverbs chapter one. And it says, and it's verse five. Hey there, MIT Dockery. <clears throat> and so it says, a wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. There's going to be a lot of wisdom and instruction that's going to go forward in this particular scope on tonight. And so I want to start with a song. And I just want you to hear this song. Let me tell you. This is what I call a signature message. I have preached this message in the state of Maryland. I have also preached this message in North Carolina. And so now I'm going to minister this word on Periscope. And I pray that even if individuals aren't able to get on right now, that they will see the replay and be able to be blessed. And so I want you to listen to this song as we move into this message called the power of the Peter. And I'm not talking about Peter that walked with Jesus. This is a message dealing with women, and I want to talk about the Peter, because guess what? Women have a tendency to allow a relationship or a man to cause them to lose their everlasting mind. Praise the Lord, Apostle Brooks. How you doing? So guess what, y'all? Listen clearly to the lyrics of this song. It's real brief. It's, only, it's really short, but I'm going to let you hear this, and then I'm going to get into what I want to say. Somebody tell me if you can hear it. Hey, yo, what's up? Uh, I've been checking you out for a little while. And, uh, okay, good. I wanted to you know we lived together. Go back to my spot and, uh, you know, spend a little time, talk, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I was checking you, checking me out. And I don't really know you that well. I don't think so. But, uh, you know, we just gonna talk, you know what I'm saying? Listen to the lyrics. Talk and maybe watch a little TV or something. Yeah. Uh, okay. Just talk. The alarm clock is now going off. What time is it? Oh, <clears throat> my alarm clock is set for six, so it's probably like six in the morning. Mm -hmm. Six in the morning? What happened last night? <laughs> hmm. No mystery You've been deceived by the enemy hey, hey. The morning after you see so clearly 2020 vision focused not cloudy That's a song by Ted and Sherry, amen? 
and it's actually called The Morning After. And being as though I had it planned, you may not have been able to actually hear the lyrics uh, in detail. So guess what? I'm going to share the lyrics to you. You hear the music in the background and it sounds like they're in a social place and the guy goes over to the young lady and he says to her, hey, I've been checking you out for a little while and I was wondering if we could get together and go back to my spot and spend a little time and talk or whatever. You know what I'm saying. And so she says to him, mm, I was checking you, checking me out and I don't really know you that well. Mm, I don't think so. Oh, we're going to just sit down and talk and watch a little TV or something. Okay, just talk. So then the next thing you know, the alarm clock is going off and she's waking up and she's saying, what time is it? You know, he said, oh, my alarm clock is set for six o'clock. Six in the morning? Then she's going to say, what happened last night? See, guess what? How many of y'all know sometimes we put ourselves in compromising situations and we don't recall what happened last night because of the things that we was doing before we got into that position? Come on now. We got some people out there that still like to sip. They still like to drink. They get intoxicated. It's an aphrodisiac a lot of time. Next thing you know, they find themselves in a situation where they're trying to figure out what happened. So it said, what happened last night? And the brother said to the sister, Oh, you know what happened last night. In other words, don't try to play dumb now. You was in the mix with everything that was going on, so don't even try to play dumb now. Then he goes on and he say to her, and he's singing the song. He says, the morning after, there's no mystery. The reality is you've been deceived by the enemy. It says, the morning after, you see so clearly 2020 vision, focus, not cloudy. The morning after, you got so much wisdom, but it's too late for rationing. The damage has been done. The morning after, who is this in your bed? You can't remember what you did last night. You scratching your head. The morning after, the morning after. And the song concluded by saying, think about it the night before so you won't have a morning after. And so the title of that song was simply called The Morning After. We're living in a world today where when you have your morning after experiences, all you got to do is go to the drugstore and get a morning after pill to wipe away the foolishness that you have done. <clears throat> And so, as I said, in that background, the song you heard, the, 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 the sound, it sounded like a social place and things of that nature where guys and girls may actually come together and meet. And so he made the suggestion for the young lady to come on back to his place. Amen. And she's going to say, I don't really know you like that. But how many of y'all know she turned around and went back to his place? He going to hit her up with the saying, say, oh, we just going to talk. That's all we going to do. We going to talk. And she going to be like, okay, we going to talk. Let's do it. And the sad part is a lot of individuals don't see anything wrong with a scenario like that. Because guess what? In today's society, a woman will get on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. All a brother got to do is inbox her, say a couple of things, like a few of her pictures. Next thing you know, they exchange your numbers and they, they out on the date. <clears throat> And so let's change it from the club scene, so to say, because how many of y'all know a lot of us believers, we're not up in the club. So we're going to switch it to a church scene and it goes a little something like this services going on and all of a sudden here come this fine brother he come walking up in the church you ain't never seen him before somebody say fresh meat because a lot of times let a new gut brother come into the church you already looking at his finger to see if he married you trying to figure out what is going what role he may play in your life because we have a tendency to size people up come on now i'm just gonna keep it real and so guess what he walks in y'all make a little bit of eye contact now it's time for the portion of the service where you meet and greet people. Half the time, you don't want to get out your seat and meet and greet nobody. But because, because you've seen this fresh meat walk up in the church, now all of a sudden, you making your way over there and you ain't giving him such a holy hug. Amen. You're giving him a horish hug where he can feel everything and some. And so next thing you know, you're hugging him and you're greeting him and praise the Lord, brother, praise the Lord. And so, you know, you are all excited. 
Guess what? Y'all ain't say nothing except for bless the Lord. Wasn't no words exchanged or anything of that nature. But now it's Bible study night. And guess what? He come to Bible study too. You really sights now. Amen. And so in this particular moment, it's an opportunity for individuals to share a little of their testimony. This brother stand up and share a little bit of his testimony. And you are straight up sights. Amen. You sit next to your girlfriend. You say, girl, <laughs> he is saved. He is anointed and he is fine. And so finally, he conversates with you. And he invites you over, sister so-and-so, for an innocent time of fellowship and prayer. Bless you, Lady Kim. <coughs> and so he invites you over for some innocent fellowship and prayer. Just like the guy in the other scene invited her over just to look a little, look, a little bit of TV and talk. And so guess what? He invites you over for fellowship and prayer. You all smiles and everything. And you say, well, you know what? I don't really know you that well. But, you know, prayer and fellowship, amen, in the word. Okay, fine, I'll go. And so guess what? Prayer, all right. Ain't, nothing, ain't no praying taking place. Ain't no word going forward. The only word that end up going forward a lot of times is Psalm 51. Amen. After you had your morning after experience, after you done did everything that you said you wouldn't do, the only word that's going forward is Psalm 51. That's when you are saying, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me from thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And so real talk, the scene is much different because most women in the church have secret lovers. Yeah, I'm talking to my sisters today. Amen. The fellas are on here and guess what? They can glean from it. But the scene is a lot different because a lot of times what I've come to find out is that you got a lot of Christian women in the church that have men. But guess what? They got these men that's in their life. They're man, they boo and some, but ain't nobody in the church ever seen your man. He ain't been to Sunday service. He ain't been to Bible study. Nobody has ever met him. Your pastor, first lady, nobody, but yet you got a boo. And so a lot of times you got sisters in the church that got these secret down low relationships. Amen. Uh, some individuals that have been in relationships for years with individuals and ain't nobody ever seen the brother. And so when it comes down to it, there's a lot of madness that's taking place in the church with my sisters that need to stop. And so when it comes down to it, I am talking about the power of the Peter. Amen. Uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to keep it clean, but I'm talking about the power of the Peter. And so I'm sure you all are old enough to understand what I'm talking about. And when you think about something that has power, that word power means the ability, amen, to act or produce an effect. The word influence, because something that has power of you, it has an influence over you. And that word influence means to affect or alter by indirect or intangible means. It means to sway. And so the power of influence has the ability, check this out, it has the ability without force. Because half the times when brothers have you out there living like you done lost your everlasting mind, they ain't do it by force. Amen? It's not like they did anything by force. They came to you straight up with who they were and what they wanted to do. And you just simply fell for the okie doke. But the power of influence has the ability without force to affect an individual to do things, be it good or bad. And so my question to you all today is this. What really has an influence over you? The evidence is in the fruit that you actually produce. It's not about the words that come out of your mouth, amen, but it's actually about the things that you do. And so I want to talk about what I see influencing my sisters, save, sanctify, Holy Ghost filled, speaking in tw tongues and, and fire baptized, uh, young and old, because guess what? It's with all ladies. Individuals that are sold out and on fire, I have seen their whole life turned around because they met a man. Amen. 
And guess what? I'm telling you something that I know too from experience. Amen. And one of the things that I said is wisdom. I started out with Proverbs and I talked about the importance of wisdom. How many of you know only a fool despises wisdom and instruction? See, if you would listen to those that have went before you and are bold enough to tell you their mistakes, because you got a whole bunch of individuals up in the church wanting you to think that they got it all together and they ain't never did nothing wrong, but the devil is a liar, but you got individuals that are willing to expose themselves so you don't have to go down the same road that they went to. But one of the problems is, like I said to my sister on her uh, video the other day, you know, a lot of times when it comes down to this whole dating thing and dealing with individuals, we don't want to receive counsel. Amen. We don't want to follow instructions that are given to us. Why? Because we grown. But it's a whole bunch of grown folks that are falling left and right in the kingdom of God. You so grown, but you can't keep yourself together. You so grown, but you 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 saying one thing, praising God, shouting, running and dancing and doing everything, but soon as you get out of church behind closed doors, you living like a straight up freak body. Come on now, let's be for real. And the sad part is the brothers know that a lot of the church women are loose. They know that it don't take much to get it from the sisters that claim they trying to save themselves until marriage. See, sometimes you don't put enough boundaries in place when you start meeting these jokers that are coming your way. You just think that you grown. You can handle it. You don't need no chaperones. You don't need group dating. First of all, a lot of times before you even go out on a physical date with somebody, you need to have numerous conversations. Let me tell you something. You got some crazy people in the world today. Things have changed. And so you just can't easily just hook up with somebody and think that everything is going to be okay. You can meet yourself a serial killer or something. You need to take some time to talk to them before you actually hook up with them. And when you do hook up with them, you don't go to their place. You don't let them go, come to your place. You drive your own car and meet them in a public place. And when the date is over, take your happy tale home. Ain't no going to the house so we could just talk a little more and things of that nature because eventually some stuff going to come down. Amen. And so the bottom line is we need to talk about this mess that's influencing the women today. And too many women have the sickness. This is one of those quotes that I wish I could really do with my husband because, you know, my husband, that's right, take your happy tale home. But, you know, my husband looks at a lot of the things that he see with the women in the church, you know, with our own children who are females and different things of that nature. And he say, you know what, the women, they got the sickness. That's what he called it. And so let me tell you what the sickness is. A, the sickness is a disorder. It's, it is a disordered, weakened, or unsound condition. Again, because we get caught up in these relationships a lot of times and we become weakened. We become unsound in our thinking. Everything that we knew about the word of God goes out the window. But guess what? You can preach it to everybody else that come your way. You can let other sisters know what they should and shouldn't do. Guess what? When you ain't got a man, when ain't nobody hollering at you, it's easy for you to get some advice. So you can tell them, no, you don't need to do this and on and on and on. But soon as you meet somebody, everything that you minister to them goes out the window. Then you hear the alarm clock going off. You wake up and up saying, what in the world didn't happen? You didn't ha you know what happened. You didn't take your own advice. And so, yes, men don't have respect uh, for women because women are too pressed. And so, you know, it's time out for faking and fronting women of God. It's time to get delivered for real. Too many of us are not delivered for real. We need to get delivered and set free. And so this sickness with women, it ain't new. Women been dumb for a long time. Hello? And I hate to say it. Women have been dumb for a long time. But guess what, ladies? It's time to stop it. You got the power to stop the foolishness that you constantly put up with. When it comes down to a we in the body of Christ, we have become lovers of pleasure. It's all about what we want. We want to be happy. We don't want to be lonely and this and that. And so we have become lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. 
We have a form of godliness. Hey, trees, we have a form of godliness, but yet we denying the power of it. And the Bible talks about silly women, how they would just fall for anything. And so half the time we falling for anything that a brother say to us, he say, hallelujah. And we think that, you know, oh, he got to be the one. Come on now. He said, oh, Jesus. Guess what? Don't you know a lot of people call on Jesus that don't even know him? So don't get tricked by the, the, the lingo that make you think that he's all right. You want to see some character. You want to see some integrity and fruit in an individual's life. And so a lot of my sanctified sisters have an outward, outward appearance of reverence for God. But clear as to what I am saying right now, I am, I, and be, understand, I ain't saying that you don't love God, okay? I'm not saying that you don't love God because you end up doing some foolish stuff. Because the Peter have you losing your mind. I'm not saying you don't love God. But sometimes when your love for God becomes stronger than the love for that thing. Then change will take place in your life. See, when I was caught up in tripping in 2000 with James Mitchell, <coughs> who is now my husband. For the first six months, we cut up. And when I was cutting up with him and I was having sex with him. And the bottom line is. I tell people all the time, he ain't have to work hard to get it because I was already ripe and ready. I don't even think he waited a month. Hello, and I'm just being for real. I was ripe and ready. He didn't have to work hard to get it. And so when it comes down to it, I knew I loved God before meeting him. And even when I met him, I still love God. But you know what I had to do? I had to be honest with God. And I said, God, I am loving this sexual intercourse that we are having more than I'm loving you right now. This joint got a hold on me. And I was honest with God. I ain't no need in lying to God because he know. But how many of y'all know when my thinking changed, when my priority changed, when God spoke to my husband and said to him, this got to stop. See, guess what? He wasn't even that spiritual. I was the spiritual one, y'all. Hello? Like a lot of us sisters, because a lot of times we end up meeting these jokers that ain't got no Holy Ghost and ain't doing nothing for God. And I was the most spiritual one, rooted and grounded in the word. And, and the reality of it is he was saved, but he wasn't going to church or doing nothing. But yet it was God that spoke to him while we was laid up in the bed together sleeping because we had just been intimate. So here it is. We laid up in the bed together. We sleeping because, yes, I was caught up all track. He was spending the night and some. We was fools for six months, I'm telling you. But we got it together and remained celibate for four years before our wedding day. Hello? And so the bottom line is God spoke to him. He wasn't even the spiritual one. But he said, get up. We got to talk. We can't do this no more because God said we can't be sleeping together. And I can't be standing over here. Y'all, that was the happiest day in my life, I'm telling you. <clears throat> because I was in so much bondage, the more spirit spiritual one. But it was a day of freedom for me. Let me tell you something. When the enemy got you caught up in a relationship and all track, things that you used to do, you stopped doing. At one point in time, I had all these scriptures right over my bed. Y'all, let me tell you something. Because I was caught up, I took the scriptures off of my bed over my headboard and put them in my bathroom. Because guess what? I was feeling a little too guilty, banging it out with this man that wasn't my husband with all these scriptures looking at me. And I'm just being for real. And the devil will make you think shifting it to another room is really going to stop what's really taking place. The power of the Peter will cause you to lose your mind. And so sometimes you got to get to a point where you love God more than that thing. You love God more than that person. Too many times we end up caught in idolatry. Amen. When we dealing with individuals that we are putting before God, we don't want to be honest about it. But sometimes you have made another person your God. And so to have a form of godliness, but denying the power describes religious activity that is not connected to an intimate relationship. See, the church today is full of people that have a lot of religious activity. Oh, you serve on the usher board. You part of the praise team. You might even be a minister for real. You doing a whole lot of works. You show up every Sunday. You show up for every Bible study. But the reality of it is you doing a lot of work, but you ain't got no relationship. Because when your relationship is jacked up, it's going to be evident by the things that you actually do. And so too many people got religious reactivity re instead of relationship. And so 
Too many of us have simply mastered doing church. We mastered it. We know how to do it. And so, when you think about it, we're going through the motions. We participating in religious activities, singing, shouting, dancing, ushering, teaching, and preaching. Yet we still empty. And so your activities, people of God, do not validate, amen, that you have an intimate relationship with God. It's what you do when you're not in church and around church folk. See, because guess what? That's the real you. Don't you know when everybody come up in the church, they putting on their game face? Everybody coming in, praise the Lord. How you doing, brother? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Hey, sis, you go, oh, I'm wonderful, highly favored of God. Everybody coming in with their game face on. But the real you shows up when you leave out of the church and when you're by yourself and when you're with other people that ain't, your, ain't in your church circle. That's you. So guess what? If I see you out on the street and you don't see me, but I hear you cussing, guess what? That's because you a cusser. So you just ain't sitting up in the house of God cussing because half the time you ain't saying nothing because the preacher doing all the talking but for real you just cussing because that's who you are you know you may be in church you know acting like you're praising god but guess what you got that text message in church from the man that wouldn't even come to church with you talking about what time you're gonna be up out of there guess what as soon as you get out of church from praising god shouting and dancing you immediately back over to his house come on now this is the type of stuff that we dealing with and it needs to stop and so, you know, unfortunately, the signs of what follows are, uh, what we're doing is real evident, you know, in church nowadays. It's really, really evident. You know, um, you know, the proof is in the pudding. You can't hide it and it shows up. And so, even when I think about it, you know, a lot of stuff that's going on with these phones, all this sexing and all this other stuff, you know, these type of things need to actually stop. Because let me tell you something, what's done in the dark will come to the light. People don't understand. All of a sudden, you know, you somebody, you know, in ministry or whatever, and a picture or a video leaks of you. What you doing taking some videos? Let me tell you something. I'm a married woman, but I ain't doing no videos. Hello? I am a married woman. And guess what? I ain't sending no sex message pictures to my husband. We ain't doing no videos because with technology today, it don't take much for it to leak. Guess what? If I'm going to be a freak of my husband, ain't nobody going to see it. Hello? The marriage bed is undefiled. And so the bottom line is you got to understand that what's done in the dark is going to come to the light. And so guess what? Sometimes your foolishness shows up. It's evident. Amen? Excuse me, the things that you actually do. And so again, I say, unfortunately, the signs of what folks are doing is real evident in the church nowadays. After nine months, guess what? Here come the baby. Hello, that's right. Sometimes you think they all right. You think they ain't doing nothing. Sister, sister, so and so. They serve all the time. And all of a sudden, you see something growing, a baby bump. Hello, and you know she ain't married. Can I just be for real? Let's be for real. We got a lot of people to get married too. And guess what? They, they end up pregnant right after they get married. But anybody that can really count can go back and count and discover you was pregnant before you even got married. Hello? Let's be for real. I see it happening. I don't always say nothing, but guess what? It don't take long to count some stuff. Oh, this is the due date of the baby. You got married this day. and Oh, you was already pregnant. Your baby was coming down the aisle with you. Hello? I'm just keeping it real. We see it happening all the time in the kingdom of God. And so guess what? You may be an individual that may not have the baby bump to show that you've been cutting up and sinning and under the influence of the power of the Peter. But guess what? Some people don't have the evidence of the baby. Amen. But you got some STDs. Hello. Somebody put on the screen STDs. Yes. You have some STDs. What are you talking about, Pastor Mitchell? I'm so glad you asked. Some of you got sexually transmitted demons. Okay? Sexually transmitted demons. Yeah, everybody can't see it all the time, but every time you connect yourself to somebody that ain't your husband, you will begin to find spirits attaching themselves to you. And you can't even understand why you just so out of control and got to have it all the time. Because those spirits...
spirits of lust are attaching themselves to you. Sexually transmitted demons. And guess what? If you ain't dealing with sexually transmitted demons and you don't have the baby bump that's evident for all to see, oh, you might have an STD. Oh, it's a lot of people that's walking around in the kingdom of God because they cutting up doing what they shouldn't be doing with STDs. Amen? So you got something going on. Your fruit may not be evident to everybody in the church because your belly ain't on swole, but boo-boo, you know what you're doing. And so the bottom line is, you end up doing all this stuff, you keep getting all these notches underneath your belt, and that are added onto your belt and added to your relationship resume, because next thing you know, they're here today, then that joker gone. And so women, when you have this sickness, young or old, you find yourself doing some dumb stuff. And understand this, all of us want to be loved. And a lot of times we put up with stuff more than what we need to because we want to be loved. The sad part about it, the way a woman's mind think, is when you go back and you get a group of women together and you ask them to tell you about their first love, do you realize most of those women will tell you about when they lost their virginity? Because we often equate sex with love. And that's not the case. But because it was our sexual experience, and you know when it's your first time doing it, you just really think you're in love with that individual. It's your first soul tie that you have. And we, 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 we want to be loved. We start out young just wanting to be loved. And a lot of stuff that we do is because we want to be loved. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be loved. But too many of you are hurting yourselves more because you don't have a balance in your life. You put up and you accept any and everything because you want to be loved. And then when you end up wounded, you trying to sit back and say, I don't know why he did this to me. Let me tell you something. A person can't do no more to you than what you actually allow. And so we all want to be loved and there's nothing wrong with that. But women of God, it's time out for you being pressed. I'm tired of my sisters being pressed in the kingdom of God. I'm going to read this poem that I wrote, and it's called Pressed. Why, oh, why must you be so pressed? Keep getting into relationships that cause you stress. Why, oh, why must you be so pressed? Always giving in, settling for less. Seek the father when you meet a man and ask him if that man is part of the plan. When he shows you warning signs not to overlook. Girl, let me tell you, it's time to book. It doesn't take years of time invested to finally realize that the man you're with is not the one that God suggested. Let me pause right there. Sometimes you are investing years in a relationship with somebody that you know deep down in your spirit, you have absolutely no desire to marry. But you've been with them for four or five years. You won't get out of it. You have a desire to get married, but you know you don't want to marry him. But the devil convinced you that it's better to have somebody than nobody. You can't even get the possible mate that could be for you because you holding on to somebody that mean you no good. No, you got to let some stuff go. It's okay being by yourself. People want to talk about sometimes I'm because I'm married. Guess what? Hello, do you realize I ain't always been married? I was single for a long time too. Amen. And so it goes on to say, it doesn't take time years, time of years invested to finally realize that the man you're with. Is not the one that God suggested. And ladies, don't be so quick to run to the altar just to turn around to go to divorce court for an ugly departure. Marriage is a commitment that needs more than I love you. Two imperfect people living together, oh, you're going to go through. But when things get tough in the midnight hour, someone needs to operate in the Holy Ghost power. Through sickness and in health, I believe that's what the vows say. If the man you think you want to marry became a paraplegic, would you want to leave or would you want to stay? Yes, trials. Sex is not a reason to get married to a man. Yes, it's one of the benefits associated with God's perfect plan. But that too will change in time, you see. These bodies of ours depreciate 
unfortunately. Hmm, imagine yourself at age 83. I'm trying to encourage you to seek the Lord. I don't know about you, but another broken heart I can't afford. So be patient, ladies, and take your time. One day you may be that good thing that a man finds. Don't settle for less because you're pressed. Wait on God because Father knows best. What hurts me more and bothers me to my core is that men know that women are pressed, especially saved single Christian sisters. They know it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's right. Snap, snap. And so they know they press, but guess what? I can hear somebody saying in the spirit, but you know, that ain't me. You know, I, I, I ain't no press type of sister. Well, guess what? You may not be pressed now, but I guarantee you there was probably a point in time in your life where you was pressed. Amen. Settling for less. And if you've never experienced it, live long enough, you may experience it. But if you listen to my wisdom and advice, you don't have to go there. Amen. If you listen to the Holy Ghost, you don't have to go there. But guess what? We've been there before. We all have had the sickness at one time or another. But guess what? You may be free right now because you have been sick and tired of being sick and tired of all the drama that you put up with year after year, man after man. So guess what? If you are a woman and you are no longer in bondage to the sickness, you're no longer under the influence of the power of the Peter, then guess what? Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Amen? Because you better remember when. And don't think that you're not exempt because I done seen some strong women lose their mind because of a man. I'm telling you. And so even if you consider yourself to be a female Mac, Sometimes you may be an individual like, oh, nah, I ain't never been pressed for nobody. See, that's that was me. I was the type of person I felt like I wasn't into relationship. I was a female Mac when I was out there in the world. And so I wasn't trying to get caught up in no relationship. My mindset was to play every joker that came my way. I felt like men played women. Guess what? I was going to play them. And so that's what I did. I was a female Mac. And so even in that, the devil had me deceived because how many of y'all know all that Mac and messed me up? I had to be totally deprogrammed in order to appreciate the husband that God had given me. But because I had a messed up mindset, because when you are a female Mac, you connect with people, you sleep with people, but you don't connect heart to heart. Amen. And so guess what? Don't deceive yourself if you, you're one of them ones to say, oh, no, I play dudes. They don't play me. No, you still getting played in the midst of it. So don't believe the lie of the enemy. And so when you have the sickness and a man knows that you are pressed, he strings you along. Yep. He strings you along for his benefit and for his pleasure. And so guess what? How many of y'all know the Bible says in the beginning was the word? Well, guess what? I'm, I'm going to use it like this. In the beginning was the word. Guess what? You heard him. He said this to you. I don't want to be in a relationship. But we can be friends. News flash. Guess what? The sickness affects your hearing. Because he clearly said, I don't want to be in a relationship. But we can still be friends. But you want me to tell you what you heard? This what you heard when you got the sickness. Because the sickness messed with your hearing. You heard, oh, he really doesn't mean that. He just needs a little time and he'll be okay. He must have been hurt from a previous relationship. So I give him a little time. So you met, your hearing is messed up when you got the sickness. Again, in the beginning was the word. Hear what the man said. He says to you, I never met a woman like you before. Guess what you heard? I will be his wife because I know he hasn't said that to anyone else. Guess what? He hasn't met a woman like you before because when God made you, he broke the mold. You're one of a kind. But in your mind, you heard that I'm super special. Again, hear what it said. The man will sometimes say to you, I would like to take you out to dinner and get to know you. You want to know what you hear when you got the sickness? Oh, he wants me to be his woman. No, he asked you to go out for a meal. He don't even know if he like you yet. He's trying to see if you are worth entertaining. But because your hearing is so messed up, when you have the sickness, you think because he asked you out to go to dinner. You say, do you think years later there may need to be some deliverance that need to take place? Yes. 
Major deliverance oftentimes needs to take place when we have been connected to individuals. Soul ties are hard to break. And a lot of times individuals can't move forward like they want to because of the soul ties. Deliverance had to take place with me. I'm telling you, because I was the Mac that I was back in the day and the way I slept. Y'all, I'm just being honest. I can't count how many people I slept with in my life. There's no way possible. There's individuals that I slept with and I didn't even know their name and I'm just being straight up. And so when you think about living a life like that, again, I needed deliverance when I got with my husband. Because here it is, a man that truly loved me. And I'm married to him. And I'm supposed to connect heart to heart. Because guess what? When we were fornicating in the six months that we was having sex, how many of y'all know he was just like every other dude that I ever dealt with? I was on a mission to turn you out. And so the bottom line is, he was he was bothered by that when I was honest with them. Because in his mind, he was like, you, you ain't love me? I said, young, I didn't know you. I mean, you hit it just like that. I didn't know you. Don't allow what I did with you sexually to make you think that I was all into you. Because I wasn't into you. I was in performance mode. I was the type of woman that liked to turn you out. So guess what? My mother always told me, whatever you do, be good at it. Be the best there is. So guess what? I was the best Mac there was out there in my mind. Amen? And so the bottom line is, I had to get deliverance. Because once I got free from the spirits of lust that was controlling me. Amen? Once I got free and got married to my husband for years later because for four years no sex no touching no kissing people want to know how in the world did you keep from being intimate at for four years we saw each other every day but brother keep your lips and tongue over there don't kiss me and i'm not gonna kiss you don't touch me in places and i'm not gonna touch you why would i want to be in an intimate kiss with you to start allowing things to get moist and starting to allow things to rise on him just to go through that whole mental gymnastics oh no no we can't do this stop stop Come on now, don't even put yourself in them positions. Bottom line is I always say, if you are an individual and you love candy, come on now, why go into a candy store if you're trying to get delivered from candy? So if you are an individual that know how your flesh operates, the flesh likes to be stimulated, and before we normally have sex with a person, unless you're in trick mode, you will normally go through kissing and all that other stuff first. So guess what? Why well, play with yourself? I was at a point in time, I ain't had time, welcome Lady Sue, but I ain't had time to keep fighting my flesh unnecessarily, thinking that I can handle my flesh and I'll be okay. No, the only way we were able to stay celibate until our wedding night is that we shut everything down. And let me tell you something, that's when you know God is working in your life. That's when you know your relationship with God has went to another level. Because when you done had something that was sure enough good to you, and you see it every day, but yet you don't do anything with it, that's when you have your flesh under control. See, some of y'all sisters that are single and saved, you think you all right. Because guess what? I haven't had sex in five years. I haven't had sex in ten years. Hello, ain't nobody took you out. You ain't been interacting with no man. So guess what? I guess you are celibate. But the real test will come when you find somebody that comes into your life. You are attracted to them. And then you're able to still say no. That's when you got power under control. That's when you really shutting that flesh down. But a lot of times people think they strong in their flesh and everything. You ain't had nobody touching you or looking at you, winking at you or even approaching you. So you got years under your belt. You ain't even been tempted. What's going to happen when you get tempted? You got to get to a point when you the temptation come your way, you find a way of escape. Because even when we was in the four years, hey, amen, Lady Sue, even when we was in the four years of standing, you know, the enemy would try to get in and say, you know what, we, we've been waiting all this time. We ain't did nothing. I mean, one time, you know, God ain't going to, you know, you know, you know, he'll understand. No, the devil is a liar. You know, if he even approached me or looked like he was going to try to kiss me, the bottom line is I'd be like, flee fornication. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we was extreme with it. But guess what? It worked. And so, Treats, yes, sometimes... You have to go through deliverance. 
because I needed to go through deliverance and get free because once me and my husband got married, number one, I was tripping y'all on our honeymoon night. I'm, I'm telling you, I was tripping on my honeymoon night because I wasn't used to being intimate again, you know, and trust me, four years of no sex. Do y'all know that was a long time for somebody that was a female, Matt? I mean, come on now. A month was a long time for me. And so four years, nothing. I was all funny acting and tripping. Then as time went on, my mind was still in bondage. And I said, God, I need help because here it is. I'm with my husband and I'm still in trick mode. My mind is taking me places where it don't need to take me. And that's because of all of the stuff that I opened myself up to. So, yes, you have to get delivered. That's why I tell people, come on now. If you can shut it down, if you don't even have to go that route where you are exposed to so much on that level, don't do it. And so, again, it affects your hearing, the sickness. You don't hear what a person is really saying. The man says to you, I have a friend. But we going through some things right now. You know what you heard? He's single and available. The devil is a liar. Amen. And so, lady, it's time to hear exactly what is being said instead of you hearing what you want to hear. Why? Because after you invested time and energy in someone who never, ever wanted a commitment with you from Jump Street, then you feeling hurt, you feeling used, you feeling abused. Five years later, and he's still saying, we just friends. He don't want to commit. Well, he said that to you in the beginning, but you did not hear what he was saying. What you got to understand, he's happy with your chocolate milk. He ain't got no problem with taking your chocolate milk. You keep on giving the man the milk for free, he ain't going to buy the cow. So guess what? When he tell you up, str up straight up that he don't want a commitment, he ain't trying to be in a no, uh, committed relationship with nobody. Guess what? He's happy with your chocolate milk. He's happy with Stacy's strawberry milk. And he's happy with Wendy's white milk. He will take milk from whoever will give it to him. But you are the one that has said, Shalice is on. Hey, Shalice. And so you are the one that have allowed yourself to fall for somebody up front that said they didn't want to be in a relationship. When he says to you, he never met anyone like you, he's telling the truth. Again, I said, because you are one of a kind. And so a statement like that could be positive or negative. He tell you, I never met anybody like you. You thinking it's all nice. He said, nah, I ain't never met like you, anybody like you, because for real, you crazy. And for real, after we pay this bill and go our separate ways, you ain't going to hear from me again. Oh, yeah, I ain't never met nobody like you before. So guess what? Don't read into it more than what it really is. When he says to you that he wants to get to know you better, guess what? Pump your brakes. It's nothing. After the first date, he may say to you, oh, I'd like to get to know you better. And bottom line is that don't mean we run into the altar getting married. Because y'all know back in the day, even when we was young, if a boy, if we liked the boy, we would be writing. The boy ain't even said nothing to us. He may have looked at us and waved. And now all of a sudden, together, forever. We talk about our babies when we have them. They're going to have brown eyes like his and curly hair like his and all this other stuff. Women, we race too much. We need to slow down. That's right. Ain't no testing the waters. I told a young lady last night. You know, because you got some individuals that feel like they want to test drive. You know, well, what if we get into the marriage and I ain't never, we, we find that we ain't sexually compatible. One thing about it, if you ain't never had it, I believe God will work it out. And if you mature enough, you will be able to have a conversation with your spouse and let them know I like this, I don't like this, and things of that na na nature. The problem that we have. If we would have did things the way God wanted us to, we would never even have anything to compare a person to. Because if you remained a virgin and the one that you married was the only peace that you have ever had, you would never even be with them thinking about, well, you know, and no, you know, so-and-so used to flip me like this and dip me like this and roll me like this. Come on now. Because you have been exposed to all of that, sometimes it get in the way. But guess what? Ain't no test driving. Uh-uh, because how many of y'all know, and I said it last night, I done test drove some cars in the natural and decided I didn't want them. So guess what? Somebody can test drive you and decide, nah, I don't even want that. 
So guess what? Don't do it. Sex is a, a small part of a relationship. We put expectations on him and he don't have a clue. Exactly. Exactly. Come on. Do y'all realize men don't think like women? When we were little, wasn't no men playing with Barbie and Ken thinking about marriage? No. We thinking about marriage. We making little cakes and cooking little dinners. We doing all this stuff that's like family oriented as little girls. They playing with trucks. They playing with cars. That's why they when they get grown, they still like their cars. They still like their trucks. They still like their motorcycles. They may have committed, but this is something that's in them. Their mind as a child wasn't where our minds was. We have always had expectations early in life. And so when the guy says, I want to get to know you a little better, guess what? Pump your brakes. Because after he takes the opportunity to get to know you, he may discover, I don't like you. Everybody ain't going to like you. After you get to know him, you may discover, you know what? <laughs> the person I thought you was or was hoping that you would be, you ain't even the one. So don't allow a statement of, I want to get to know you, to take you all the way there in your mind. Amen? And then, you know, this whole friend issue. Y'all need to stop with this friend issue and stop settling for this mess with them wanting to be your friend. Because they want to be your friend with all kind of benefits. You know, you giving them money. You letting this joker use your car. You sleeping with him. But he just your friend. Every time he enters, oh, this is my friend. This is my friend. Then you have a, a nerve when you go out one day and you see him with somebody else. And you catch an attitude because you was just with me last night. We was just out to dinner and at the movies the other day. Now I see you walking down the boulevard with this young lady. Who is this? And he tell you, hold up. You ain't got no right to question me. We just friends. But you the one that settled for that friend stuff. Because you're hoping that sooner or later I'm going to change his mind. It's been five years. He's still calling you your friend. What you waiting on? You wasting time. And so this friend thing today is out of control and it needs to stop. When you think about it, friends with benefits lack commitment. And most men are the ones that push the friend envelope. Women, you ain't trying to be their friend forever. forever. You want to be their woman and you eventually want to be their wife. You only their friend five years later because they ain't take it, taking it to the next level. And so when you think about it, the sickness makes you say things like, well, you know, I'm good with just being his friends. I mean, you know, I ain't really trying to be in a relationship for real. The devil is a liar. You're just convincing yourself that you really don't want to be in a relationship because he ain't trying to commit to you. So stop lying to yourself. You want to be his one and only. You want to be his woman. You want to be his wife. That's why you keep investing so much time with this individual. But guess what? If you look up again 10 years later, and he ain't committed to you, you're the fool. You're the one that's putting up with signs that God has shown you that this ain't the one you're putting up with it. So get mad at yourself, not him. That's right, ain't gonna waste no time. And so, when you think about it, you need to stop lying to yourself and stop fronting, you know, like you are happy with an undefined relationship. You know, it's, it amazes me, because I, I know this young lady, she got this man, and I ain't never seen him, but, you know, it's always these moments where, you know, my friend did this for me. My friend did this for me. I'm like, okay, where's the friend? I ain't never seen the friend. And I'm like, okay, well, what are y'all doing? Well, we've been friends for seven years. Are y'all in a relationship? I mean, we haven't really. I'm like, come on now, please. This is just foolishness. Because she's holding on, hoping and he may just really see her like a friend. He ain't made no advances. He ain't did none of that. Every now and then they go out. But I'm like, in my mind, I'm saying, is he really a real person? Or is this person make-believe in her mind? But the bottom line is, don't nobody want to be in no relationship forever that's undefined. I love Steve Harvey because he talks about sports fish or a keeper. When you think about it, men, they out there fishing. They're hunters. They're always fishing. But guess what? When you think about a fish, if it's a sports fish, he'll get that sports fish, play with it, look, look with it, look at it, hold it up, make it a trophy girl for a minute. But guess what? When it's a sports fish, eventually they do what? They toss it back in the water. They toss it back in the water. But guess what? When it's a fish that's a keeper, oh, they take that one home. They take it home, scale it, cook it, and some. And so the bottom line is, as a woman, you want to ask yourself, am I a sports fish or am, am I a keeper? 
And for real, it's all in how you present yourself. Can I tell you? I'm just going to share this with you. Um, in, his, in his book, uh, it says sports fish. When you are a female, you're a sports fish. It says these type of women, they don't have any rules, requirement. They don't respect. They don't have any respect for herself or guidelines. And when men can pick her up a scent, they can pick her up a scent, her scent a mile away. She's the party girl who takes a sip of her Long Island iced tea or a shot of her Patron. Then she announces to her suitor that she just wants to date and see how it goes. And she's the convers or she's the conservatively dressed woman at the office who is a master at networking but clueless about how to approach men. She has no plans for any ongoing relationships, is not expecting anything in particular from a man, and sets absolutely not not one condition or restriction or to anyone that she actually deals with. When it talks about the keeper, it says, these are the type of women that never give in easily. And the standards and the requirements start the moment you open your mouth. See, a lot of times they can tell where you are when you open your mouth. You let me tell you something. If some dude walk up to you and say, what's up, shawty? First of all, you don't need to entertain that. But if you like, hey, how you doing? He can sense right there that you ain't even got a lot going on with yourself just by the way he addressed you and you allowed it. But sometimes how you respond, let him know, oh, oh, she ain't playing. I got to step up my game. See, that's one of the things that my husband said with me in our relationship. He said it got to the point he had to jump through hoops in order to get me. And I'm like, yeah. Because even though I may have failed in the first six months with you, I still had some standards. I knew what I wanted, and I wasn't trying to deal with no anything. I would rather have been by myself than to be in a relationship with somebody for years and years and be miserable. I experienced that once in my life. Hello? One time only for three years. And I said, never, ever, ever again will I experience what I experienced in that relationship. And so, yeah, there were certain things that I required, things that I desired. Number one, I ain't want a man that just went to church. We got to stop settling for these men that just go to church. I wanted a man that had a relationship with God. You know, I didn't give God a whole lot of requirements about his financial status, his looks, the type of car he drive. My main thing was, God, I want a man that loves you. And how many of y'all know, because I got a man that love him, I got the whole package. Hello? And yes, we've had some ups and downs. There was times when the finances was a little tight. Hello? There was times when we got married and I held the, 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 the ball down. Amen? You know, hey, when you marry a man that got children, that's something you got to deal with. Child support. But guess what? The tables have now turned. In marriage, it'll be up and down. But the bottom line is, I got the full package because of my number one request. A man that loves you, not a churchgoer. Because if a man loves God, he is going to know how to love you the way you need to be loved. And so we want to be individuals that look at us as women and they realize that this is a keeper, not a sports fish. And so the sickness deceives you and make you think you are special. Scenario, a man, he's married or he's in a relationship. But shows interest in being with you. That's out of order right there. But you want to be smiling and things of that nature. But he shows interest in you. So now you are wondering if you uh, uh, should see what's up with him. I mean, I know he said he married. I know he married and all. But he's been looking at me lately and checking me out. And so maybe I should see what's up with him. The devil is a liar. The devil make you think you special. Because he checking you out. You know he married and he got a man. Guess what? You ain't you ain't special. He a hoe. Hello? You are not special. He's just a hoe. An individual that's not respecting his marriage relationship or the committed relationship he's in. You're another victim. Stop thinking that you're special. Because one thing about it, what goes around comes around. And so you got another scenario. The sickness messes with your hearing. And so you play deaf, deaf like you can't hear when the spirit speaks and move forward. You know, you know, the spirit speaks to you, tell you not to do something, but you move forward anyway. And so guess what? You, you ignore the spirit. You get involved with this individual. You all excited because guess what? He leave his wife or he leave that girl and now he's all with you. Hello, do you realize he just made some room for the next one? Let me just put a quarter right here in the pocket. As I talk about this side piece, can I talk about this side piece real quick? 
I ain't going to be much longer, y'all. Amen. I hope y'all enjoying it, but I just got to get it out. So let's talk about this side piece. Because people are settling for being a side piece. I saw something on Facebook one time and I thought it was awesome. Because a young lady had a conversation with a guy and he just told her the rules of a side piece. See, if you are one of them little stupid women that settle for being somebody's side piece, then baby, if you want to play the game, you need to understand the rules. Hello? And so guess what? First of all, when it comes down to a side piece, you need to understand... Okay, because if you're going to fall for somebody that got somebody, you ain't the number one lady. You are the other lady. And so the guy said, guess what? If you decide peace, you need to understand that you are the other woman. This does not mean that you are the only other woman. So guess what? Act accordingly. Another one of the things said, please focus on the stolen moments that we spend together. See, because these jokers want to want to condition your mind on how you need to act when you a side piece. OK, so it says, please focus on the stolen moments that we spend together. Do not concern yourself with my whereabouts when we are apart from each other. Frankly speaking, my life outside of our time together is not your concern. See, that's what they letting you know. When you settle for being the side piece, oh, you need to know this. When I ain't with you, don't worry about where I am or what I'm doing. And you like, okay, as long as we get our time together, okay. Then it goes on to say, be comfortable with who you are to me. Meaning, know your role. Stay your role. Stay in your lane. And then guess what? They'll let you know straight up when you decide peace. Don't mention my wife or my main woman. There's no need for us to have a conversation about them. Don't mention them. And, and guess what? She's none of your concern. And do not compare yourself to my main chick in any way. And do not attempt to contact her. Because to do so will breach our agreement. Oh, these rules are something for this side piece. It says anticipate. When you side peace, anticipate frequent changes in our plans. See, you all ready? It's Friday night. He told you y'all going to get together. And guess what? He get a call from his wife and say, we need to do this. And all of a sudden, you dress sitting at home looking like a fool. The power of the Peter got you tripping in this position because you're the one that's selling for being somebody's side piece. And so it says, anticipate frequent changes in our plans. For the most part, our spur of the moment escapes is the best that I can do. Because guess what? He said, I can't promise you nothing. And then it says, you must understand that maintaining a positive vibe while we are with each other, in each other's company, is a vital success to our situationship. Amen. Situationship. No bickering, no naggering about promises that I didn't keep. They don't want to hear that. Then you got to understand when you're a side piece, bottom line, he says we secret lovers. We can't blast our situationship to the world. So guess what? You want to take selfies, ain't no pictures. You want to go here, take a walk in the park, ain't no pictures, ain't none of that happen, no walk in the park. Guess what? He going to take a ride in that bed with you. That's about it because he ain't going to deal with you out in the open unless he say he going to a business meeting and meet you out of town and his wife stay at home. But the bottom line is you ain't got that type of right as a side piece. And when you under the influence of the power of the Peter, you will put up with this foolishness and accept it like it's okay. It's sad. And so... You know, it says we secret lovers. We can't blast our relationship to the world. He said, please don't tag me on Facebook and don't send me invitations to your work or your family functions or events. Major holidays, more than likely, we will not be together. Hello? Side piece. And so then it says, no discussion about where the situation ship is headed. Don't ask me when I'm leaving my wife or when I'm breaking up with the other woman or what's our plans for the future. Do you see, where do you see a thing having that conversation? Boo, you a side piece. Basically he's saying, just roll with what you're getting right now. It says, where, it says, we are where we will be together in the moment. So guess what? Enjoy it. No, this, and then it says, yes, I am still sleeping with my significant other. Woo. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you're dealing with a joker that's married and he's cheating on his wife and that Bama is telling you that we don't even sleep in the other, same room anymore. Okay. You ain't got no plans for the future. That's right. But they won't tell you we don't sleep together. We ain't in the same room and all this other stuff. Come on now. Don't believe the lie. Because guess what? 
He ain't letting his wife know that he's having an affair with somebody. When he with you, he said he worked late at the office. Hello? And so you thinking, well, I know they ain't sleeping together and all this other stuff. Let me tell you something. Men like sex. And guess what? They ain't got to be feeling you to do it. Hello? That's why you can have a major argument with your spouse, with your man, whoever. And guess what? You still caught up in your feelings and they still want to have sex. Because guess what? They like it. They love it. They ain't, that, they ain't got to be connected right here in order to do it. So guess what? If he been sleeping with this woman, his wife, and she still want to have sex with him and things like that, you better believe it. He's doing it to her and he's doing it to you. You the side piece. And so guess what? Sometimes, you know, you got some jokers that'll be bold enough to let you know, yeah, we still intimate. And you know what? You'll still be with them. And then next thing you know, you try to come to him and say, I think I missed my period. Because you up there sleeping with somebody who's married to somebody that ain't your husband. You don't need to be with. And you're doing it in the wrong. And then you want to come with some, I think I might be pregnant. Come on now. And so... One of the things when you decide peace, one of the things in the rule that says, I am not interested in bringing a child into our situationship. By the way, an unplanned pregnancy will not force a relationship or a commitment. Yes, I'm still on. Look, I'm like you tonight. I'm still, I'm long tonight. I know it. <laughs> yes, I'm still on. I'm winding down though. It's been an hour because I came on at nine. So it's 10 06. And so uh, uh, the other thing it says, there are no guarantees uh, about the outcome of our situationship. Save one. He says, guess what? I am a cheater at heart and that won't change unless I want it to. So guess what? You can give it to him morning, noon and night. You can buy him Everything that he ever asked you for, you could do everything that he wants you to do. But if he is a hoe and he ain't been delivered from that lifestyle, you can't change him. The only person that can change him is his self with the help of God. You don't have that type of power. And so when you think about it, when you settle for being that side piece, you really ain't got no rank. Amen. And so it says, I'm a cheater at heart and I won't change unless I want to. And until that happens, if you are promoted, check this out. If you are promoted to the main chick, please know that yet another side piece will fill the vacancy that you left behind. That's why I said what goes around comes around. And so you start out getting involved with somebody and they already in a relationship. They're married. And then next thing you know, they eventually leave their spouse to be with you. Next thing you know, you years into the relationship and they leave you for somebody else. Because they ain't had their stuff together when you first got with them. And so the sickness, women of God, will also make you think having a baby will make a man commit to you and love you. Somebody say the devil is a liar. That don't work. It didn't work with Leah, so what makes you think it's going to work with you? But for some reason, the power of the Peter, when women are tripping because of these relationships, they think getting pregnant is going to make a man want to be with them. It don't work. And let me tell you the key thing about it that you need to learn from Leah in the Bible. She wanted bad to be loved by Jacob, real bad. He always wanted Rachel. His heart was with Rachel. Leah wanted him. So Leah was sleeping with him. She got him first, but he didn't want her. So he kept sleeping with her. She kept getting pregnant. She had seven babies, y'all. Seven babies later. And he still didn't want her. But do y'all realize he kept having sex with her? Oh, you keep giving it to him. He'll still take it. But the babies ain't make him want you. He enjoyed the sex, but he still ain't want you. So don't think that getting pregnant by a man is going to make him love you and want to be with you and make you his wife. No, we need to wake up, ladies. And so, ladies, we must do things differently. The power of the Peter must be broken over the lives of my sisters. Amen. The sickness that we have must cease. You got to ask yourself, are you sick and tired of the foolish cycle? Thank you, ladies, Sue. I'm trying. 
But you got to ask yourself, women, are you sick and tired of the foolish cycle? You are the one that's allowing it. You're setting yourself up. You're ignoring the warning signs that God has been showing you time and time and time again. You're fleecing God because he showed you something. And then you say, okay, well, maybe God, if that's really you, then I need you to, to do this. And it's like, okay. And it's like more and more and more. I'm like, what is it going to take? Because sometimes we feel like, oh, I guess I really got to catch him in the bed with somebody doing something to, in order to, 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 to accept it. A lot of times you catch that, you see that, and you still pit up with the foolishness. I am a firm believer that men cheat because we allow them to. I'm going to say that again. I am a firm believer that I think so many men cheat because we allow them to. What happens is we love them so much, okay? You said, I'm gonna have to come back and teach us how to truly be free, amen. We love them so much. And when we find out that they have done something to uh, 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 cross the boundaries in the relationship and they come with the, I'm so sorry, you know, please forgive me. They come with the tears and all that other stuff. Guess what? Because we still love them and because we want it to work, we forgive them. And we really, and we really, after all the anger and stuff, we try to move forward. And guess what? They do it again. And they cry. They beg. They plead. We stay. And they do it again. So if men are constantly going through life and they realize that with a woman, you can have your cake and eat it too. And she going to always be there for you. Why would they change? If we get some sisters that take a stand the first time and say, that's it. I'm, I'm talking about these are dudes that you date and you ain't married or none of that. But the first time, because a lot of times when individuals get married and they're in their marriage and they're dealing with infidelity in their marriage, when I counsel them, I want to find out, did you have issues while y'all was dating? And how many of y'all know most of them say, yeah, but the woman married them anyway. And so the bottom line is if we set greater standards, there would not be so much cheating going on because they will finally realize, oh, we can't do this no more. These women done got smart. They done woke up. And so now, you know, I need to do something different. Yeah, live right. Kill your flesh. Even though you're a hunter, you don't have to always hunt. My husband told me that. He said, you got to understand, we, we as men, we're hunters. And it's in us to hunt. Just because we get married, it doesn't take that natural thing on the inside of us away to hunt. Instead of doing what naturally comes to you, you control your flesh. But that don't mean the desire to hunt is not there. And so the bottom line is we give them access and we allow them to cheat because uh, we put up with any and everything. And so you ladies, you got to realize that you do deserve more. Do you realize that you are precious jewels? You are virtuous women of God and that you need to come forth and understand that if a man is going to be with you, that you are worth waiting for. You don't always have to continue to give your body to a person sexually to try to win them or to gain them because that's really no guarantee that you're going to get the man. And so are you tired of compromising your Christianity? Come on now. Are you tired of going to the altar every time you turn around asking God to forgive you for the same thing because you found yourself same stuff, different day, same stuff, just a different face, but doing the same exact thing? So I close with this. Ladies, hear me clearly. There's nothing wrong with desiring a man. However, connecting with the wrong man can be detrimental to your spiritual health. A man that does not know, honor, respect and obey the man talking about God will bring you nothing but heartache, disappointment, and pain. And unfortunately, you have so many women today that have been hurt over and over and over again in relationships with men that the devil has now deceived them thinking that they need to be with a woman in a homosexual relationship because another woman understands them. 
I know women in homosexual relationships that have been through other women like women go through men one after the another. Just because it's a homosexual relationship, just because you with another woman thinking a woman understand you, guess what? If she a hoe, she gonna be a hoe and she gonna do what she do. And so the bottom line is, it ain't about the sex of a person, it's about a person's character and integrity. If that is not in check, if their relationship is not in check with God, they're not going to treat you the way you need to be treated. But you got so many women because they are so hurt, devastated, they are getting into same-sex relationships, and it's breaking my heart. So if a man doesn't love God for real, he will never know how to love you the way you need to be loved. Being connected to mess, to the wrong power, because we've been talking about the power of the Peter. Being connected to the wrong power can drain you to the point of exhaustion and spiritual dehydration. Some individuals have been dealing with the sickness for a long, long time, but it's not too late to reach out and get what you need. You need the power of God to break you from the power of the Peter. When the power of God comes upon you, things happen. There's power in the blood. There's power in obeying the Holy Ghost. There's power in receiving wise counsel and obeying the instructions that are given to you. But at the end of the day, it's all about choice. So I hope and pray that you realize some stuff needs to change. Don't allow the sickness to constantly affect your hearing. Hear what an individual is really saying to you and receive it for what it is. And make wise decisions in your life, women, to refuse to settle for less. I'm getting ready to close. But if anybody has any questions... Put your question on the screen and I will answer it. I know this was a long scope, an hour and 16 minutes so far. But I'm tired of my sisters losing their mind because of a man. Throwing everything about the word of God that they know to be true out the window for some joker that half the time just coming to use and abuse them. And so I don't see any questions. I pray that you have enjoyed this scope. I am going to end this scope and um, it'll be on catch forever until I decide to remove it. So if there's somebody that you know you think would like to see the scope or need to see it, then guess what? Send them to catch and type in my name, Tanya Mitchell. I'm so glad you came on, Kim. Did you? You better read that chapter. I ain't playing with you. Them boundaries in dating so that you can stay strong and I don't have to be fussing at you because you done went out on some blind date and lost your mind. Hello? All right. Anyway, y'all take care. Enjoy the rest of your night. I appreciate you all. And don't take for granted when you join my scope. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye.